uh, named Rachel Near in Columbus, Ohio. She had called into our voter response line, our voter hotline, 877-GO-CNN-08, and here's the message she left us. Listen to this. Hello. Even though I presented the correct um, voter identification, um, I was forced to vote by provisional ballot because um, of a problem that actually isn't a problem according to state law. Afterwards, I did contact the Board of Elections locally, and they admitted that it was a mistake. Now, Rick, because of the way you interact with your viewers on this show, it's really important to let people know it is very helpful because when people call us, because of the volume of calls we're getting, we're able to spot trends. So we were able to uh, contact the State Board of Electors. We were able to, to contact Rachel, who left us that call, and Mary Snow is in Columbus, Ohio. So we have all circled back, and here's what we found out. Uh, Rachel was correct. She should have been allowed to vote. She had moved. Her driver's license did not reflect her new address, but that doesn't have to be the case in the state of Ohio. But uh, we spoke to a professor at the U, uh, Ohio State University, uh, Edward Foley, who says that it is uh, remarkably complicated, the provisional ballot law. Now, here's the thing. Rachel was given a provisional ballot. Mm -hmm. She did vote. Her ballot will not be counted in tonight's total. It will be counted sometime between the next six and ten days. She did the right thing, but the State Board of Electors and the Secretary of State says that they are now going to proactively speak to judges across Ohio and let them know, because the provisional balloting is so complicated there, that they can accept that sort of identification. So hopefully, because of yeah. Rachel's call, other people will have an easier time of it. Hang with me here, Ali. There's something I want to get to. I've been sure. looking at some of the voter turnout numbers that have been coming in uh, from all over the country, and they're massive. Uh, yep. Look, uh, Los Angeles. Uh, they're saying they're going to have a record breaker, uh, record breaking turnout there. Uh, that's a that's in Orange County, and that's according to the L.A. Times. In Georgia, they're talking about it being up 30 percent. Texas, this is the Dallas Morning News. Uh, they're expecting 68 percent higher than ever. Ohio, uh, Monroe County, there 80 percent. They're talking about. I mean, these yep. are these are numbers we haven't heard about in this country in years. In fact, you heard what I said just moments ago. 1908 was the last time we had more than 66%. They're saying they might be able to have more than that now. If that's it's, the case, yep. isn't that the biggest problem for these yes. folks that are handling this thing? Yes, as I told you, as we, we're looking at mechanical and registration problems, if this is the case, what will happen is as people who are leaving uh, work, maybe early, maybe at, at the normal time to go and vote, thinking that it might take them an hour, and if they have to spend two or three or four hours, what happens is it could end up delaying poll closings. Now, if you're in line, you generally get to vote, but the bottom line is, they still can't count those ballots, which means we won't get results. Now, will people stay in line and, and vote? Probably. We're not yet seeing the poll access problems, which is that code uh, popping up to number one. But it is the number three concern right now. People hmm. are very concerned about the amount we're, of time it's taking. Though. We're going to be following some of those states. As a matter of fact, let, let, let's do this, Ali. We'll be checking back with you throughout the show. Yep. Uh,